Name's Butch. I'm a farmhand by trade. That don't mean I'm that tough, though. When them Knowles came in and ransacked our farm, I couldn't do nothing but watch as my family was taken from me and thrown to the back of them carts. I gotta believe they're still alive out there. Will you help me? Hello, I'm Lissa. Ever wondered what the future has in store for you? So did I. A teller should never read her own fortune. And I learned that the hard way. My name is Oliver. Now listen, I know I don't look it, but I'm actually 43 years old. Once, when I was 11, I nabbed a ring from a wizard's shop and slipped it on me finger. I've tried everything, but to this day I can't remove it. I'm searching for someone who can help me get rid of this thing, once and for all. So, so you, you want, want to be a human? human? So, you want to be a human? My name's Marcel. Welcome to the Commander Crusaders YouTube channel. And today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of being a human in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Welcome to the first episode of So You Want to Be, where I'm going to go through each race of the Dungeons & Dragons source books and talk about the pros and cons of the races, do a little bit of theory crafting for your character, and give you some ideas on why or why not you might want to play said race. Obviously, the first episode today is human, and I think it's the first race that most people look at. First, let's start off with the types of humans. The first one is the most simple one, the regular human. In most worlds, humans are the dominant race. They're the ones that push most technology. Their ideas are usually the ones that drive the world. They're a simple race. They get plus one to each of their ability scores as a character. They're what you would call the jack of all trades, master of none. They're not particularly good in any stat, but they are all right in all of them. The next type of human is the variant human. The variant human is the one that is most commonly picked, and it's because it is just like the regular human except you get a special ability called a feat at the beginning of your character creation. So you get all the plus one stats that the regular human gets, plus you get basically a superpower. Feats are usually given to characters at level four and they are special abilities that provide your character with some kind of ability to interact with the world or combat in a different way. An example of a feat is the Tavern Brawler feat. It's my personal favorite feat. What it allows you to do is use any object in a Dungeons & Dragons campaign as a weapon. It's called an improvised weapon. It makes you proficient in those types of weapons. So normal characters, if you hit somebody with, say, a stick, the numbers of your roll are going to be much lower than if you were to hit them with a sword. But if you have the Tavern Brawler feat, your stick is gonna do much more damage than someone who doesn't have the Tavern Brawler feat. I've used bar stools, golf clubs. Yes, there was a golf club in one of our games. I've used beer bottles. It's a lot of fun. Normally, you have to wait for level four for this kind of feat. But if you pick the variant human, you get it as soon as you make your character. The next humans, are from a source book called the Eberron source book based around Magic the Gathering. You should probably ask your dungeon master before you pick one of these types of humans because they may not exist in the world that your dungeon master is creating. The first marked human, what they're called, is the mark of finding human. They're born with dark magic inside of them that allows them to become expert hunters. They get plus two wisdom and plus one constitution. They get dark vision, extra bonuses to their perception and survival checks, and the ability to cast the spell Hunter's Mark without needing to learn it. The next marked human is called the Mark of Handling Human. These humans are one with nature, so they're provided plus two wisdom and plus one of another ability of their choice, anyone they want. They get bonuses to their animal handling and nature checks, and lastly, they can cast Animal Friendship without needing to know that spell. The mark of making human 
is a human who creates. Usually they're an artificer, inventor, or wizard. They get plus two intelligence and plus one to any other stat they choose. They get bonuses for their arcana checks using special tools. They get proficiency with special types of tools. They get a free mending cantrip once per day that basically heals a regular object. If you had a broken pair of glasses, you could fix them. And they get extra spells if they choose to pick the wizard or warlock classes. The Mark of Passage human is a slippery, speedy type of human. They get plus two to their dexterity and plus one to any other ability of their choice. Their walking speed is boosted to 35 instead of 30. They get bonuses to their acrobatics checks. They know the Misty Step spell by heart, which allows them to teleport. And finally, they can learn additional spells if they're a wizard or a warlock. Finally, the Mark of Sentinel humans. This mark prepares the human for danger, so they get plus two to their constitution and plus one to their wisdom. Their insight and perception skills get bonuses, so they're better at seeing if people are lying or seeing if people are following them. They can cast the shield spell once per day. They have a special skill that allows them to swap places with a creature that is being hit by an attack and take the damage for them. And lastly, they know additional spells if they become a wizard or a warlock. So, why should you pick a human? Or why should you not pick a human? Well, let's talk about it. The pros of being a human are pretty simple. First off, you're not particularly weak in any of your stats. You're actually pretty good in most of them. As for roleplay, you're usually liked by most races in most Dungeons & Dragons campaigns. You'll have to ask your dungeon master if that's the case. In some campaigns, humans are not the dominant race. Humans might even be a race that is enslaved or a race that is disliked. But in most campaigns, they're usually the dominant, most liked race. They're safe. Another pro is if you pick the variant human, you get to start with that feat, which is basically the strongest ability you can have as a level one character. There are so many feats to choose from, and there are so many options that you could pick a variant human for seven campaigns in a row and never feel like you're playing the same character. Finally, there are a lot of options to pick from if you pick human and your dungeon master is allowing dragon marks. Now let's move on to the cons. First off, you're not particularly good in any skills unless you're dragon marked. As a dragon marked human, you get those special abilities that allow you to have extra dexterity or extra wisdom. But if you're not, and you're a regular human, all of your stats are pretty basic. Secondly, you can feel pretty bored if you don't create your human with an interesting backstory. Other races like, say for example, a goblin, usually don't have to make a crazy backstory to have an interesting character. You can have a lot of fun playing a goblin that is just run away from their tribe. Because inherently, those characters are fun to roleplay. If you're playing as a human, it's your job to make them interesting. Again, ask your dungeon master about what the world is like. Ask them what places humans can come from. What places are they most popular or where are they not liked? Those can give you some ideas of how you want to create your backstory. Lastly, for the cons, if your campaign doesn't have marks, your options are pretty much pick a variant human or don't pick a human at all. It kind of sucks. The regular human doesn't really have anything special that would make you want to pick them over the variant human. That's just my opinion, but you can go look at the source book yourself and decide. All right, let's talk roleplay. How do you roleplay as a human? Well, it truly depends on your dungeon master and the way that humans are portrayed in your world. I've seen worlds where humans are the dominant race, but nobody likes them because they are, in fact, too dominant. I've seen worlds and I've played in worlds where humans are held in captivity. Um, and that's actually a lot of fun to play in. It makes your human a little bit weaker. Uh, and sometimes that restriction can breed a lot of creativity. I think the best part about role-playing a human is all the options that you have. I could role-play a human that has my regular voice, just like the one I'm speaking right now, and it would be a fine voice for the human. I don't think I could pull off a goblin that spoke this way unless I had a very specific type of backstory that explained why the goblin spoke like this. Now, don't be intimidated by role-play. When it comes to your Dungeons and Dragons campaign, if this is your first campaign that you're joining, take it slow. If you pick a human, it's a great starting point because you can just talk 
Disclaimer, you can talk regular with any race that you pick. You'd never have to roleplay. Hopefully you have a very welcoming DM that allows you to try roleplaying out and have fun with it. And hopefully you're playing with a group of people that accept a little bit of goofiness. It's a lot of fun to put on a voice for a character, but if you're scared about that, humans are a really awesome starting point. My biggest piece of advice for role-playing a human is to make an interesting backstory so that you stay interested in your human. Give the human something to be connected to. I gave three examples at the start of this video. The first character I showed you is a character called Butch. He's a farmer who basically grew up a regular human, um, a little bit more burly and muscly because he grew up on a farm lifting hay barrels and things like that. And what sprung him into action is a group of gnolls, which are like dog-like creatures, came in and ransacked his farm, took all of the animals, and took his family hostage basically turning them into slaves. This gives him a huge motivation to get out there and try and save them. He's got a flaw because he seems cowardly. Flaws are a great way to get into role-playing a character. Give them something that's not so great. That restriction will breed a lot of creativity in your character and make them very unique and memorable. The second character I created was Lissa. She's a fortune teller who saw a mysterious vision and I didn't go too deep into it because it's fun to spark the imagination of the fellow party members and even the dungeon master that maybe you saw something horrible in the future uh, and you're gathering up people to be in your party, be with you, to protect you from whatever this thing is that might be coming after you. That was a really fun character to create. The final character that I showed you is a character called Oliver who I've been playing for years. I love Oliver. He's one of my favorite characters. He's like my pride and joy. I created him with a really interesting backstory. I love the idea of a character who's trapped and cursed in a body that they hate. So he's basically an 11 year old boy with the brain of a 43 year old man, desperate to find somebody to get this curse lifted from his ring that he's wearing. And it's fun for the DM as well because he has created this whole side story for me that our characters have been on where we kind of hunt down different mystics and wizards and warlocks that claim to be curse removers and try and get the thing fixed and removed. And the, also the fun part is we have no idea what will happen once that ring is removed. I like to use Oliver as an example of just how interesting you can make your backstory as long as your DM gives you the leeway to do that, gives you the opportunity to do that. So you should ask your DM, run an idea by them. If you have an idea, throw it out there. Humans are great because they can come from almost any area of the world of most Dungeons and Dragons campaigns. Your options are pretty much limitless. So if you want to be a human, all you got to do is go out there and do it. Ask your DM what their world's like and make a human that you're proud of. I'm Marcel, this has been the Commander Crusaders, So You Wanna Be episode number one, So You Wanna Be a Human. Go out there and roleplay your butt off, have fun, and I'll see you next time.